right. Shablamity. Oh, man, we were both ready for it. That countdown. I see you're prepared. Got your drink. I got two because mm. I know I'm going to drink this one, and then I'm going to be, like, thirsty as fuck by the end of it, so I got two ready. Excellent. Um, I, I'm starving. Well. But I just shoved some popcorn in my mouth, so I might have shit in my teeth. But <laughs> I hope you do. At least you not. You know, it'll nah. compete with the, my crusty face. I uh, yeah, you know. had a – so we're getting um, solar panels installed. I don't know if I told you that. Um, I, I'm jealous. Well, I feel like this is one of those things where I'm like, am I getting fucked? <laughs> like anytime service people come, they're always – I feel like 95% of the time they're trying to fuck you. So I tried to do all the research I could because they were a door-to-door company. And like I normally just shoo those motherfuckers away like fucking flies. And – this person like said kind of the right thing to at least get me to engage. And she was really friendly. And, and I basically told her, I was like, I usually, I'm not, I'm not into this. She was like, no, totally understand. She was like, but it would be cool if I could tell you about a little bit of the shit that I think you would like. And I was like, all right, what do you need? And she was like, I just need 30 minutes, but I have, you know, your wife needs to be here. And I was like, last time I heard that I got tricked into like this three hour, freaking meeting in my house where this lady came in and she actually didn't even tell us she was like s- selling something. She was like, Hey, we're doing, we're doing water reports in the neighborhood. You know, would we be able to come in? You know, would you be interested in a water report? And we had just moved here and I was like, fuck yeah, it sounds great. And then, uh, yeah, it was a switch and bait. It was like, here's the water report. I just love that you got excited about water reports. I want to like, make fuck sure yeah, water, water reports. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> And then they were selling the the filter that they install. Yeah, like a $50,000 yeah. shit and went, all that. Yeah, went through the exact same thing when we moved into this house. Dude, and, uh, exact same. I, I was like difficult getting her out of the house, actually. And so when she left, she, she was like, and it, it was one of those things where it's like, never will I do a sign up today for this great deal. But she was pulling that shit hard. Anyway, um, dude, we're already off to a bad start because I'm like, I've gone down the rabbit hole and I've lost track. So. No, we were talking about solar, and I'm jealous, and that was the whole. But why did we start talking story. about solar? Because you said you're getting solar. I don't know. I feel like there was something there. I mean, I don't know what you were starting, but that's what you started with. You were like, "Oh yeah, I'm getting solar," and I said, "I'm jealous," and you were like, "Oh yeah, she's fucking sold me." And then yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's one of those things. So I don't, I don't know, know where you were fucked. going with it, but anyway, I, feel like there's I want a reason solar. I started cause... talking about that, but it's okay. Oh. Well, you didn't write it down in our thing. I know. If you were, but. I feel like I wish in this but, app we could go back while we're in the episode and just listen to like, what did I just say a minute ago? Okay, cool. You'd be like, oh yeah, oh, wait. that's why I was gonna say that. You're getting a drink. You got your drink. I don't know. Fuck it. Fuck it. Just let's, you're trying to remember. I'm trying right to remember. Now, this so. sucks. I feel like okay, I was about I'm to sorry. say something. Well, I'll tell you this right now. Yeah. Literally, I don't care how much it costs. I will have solar on my next house. Because there's nothing more that me and my wife fight about. And it's not even fight. She just gets angry at the electric bill. Yeah. And she's like, I want a big house. And then she sees the electric bill. And she's like, I don't want a big house. I don't want an electric bill this high. And I'm like, okay, but the house is big. And it's fucking freezing cold outside. (laughs) And so the heating bill is going to be high. So the next house, I don't care how much it costs. There will be enough solar panels and battery storage to where it's like, we don't have to yeah, pay an electric We're getting bill. the Tesla. That is my number Tesla one battery. goal. <clears throat> so apparently yeah. there's all these tricks where you can kind of like set it up in this super, op- super optimal way where it's like it charges from this time to this time. As soon as the sun gets here, it starts using it from your battery. So it's like ways to just tweak it to get like super, you know, a super optimized Dude, usage. it's so customizable. Yeah. Like you can make it like... You could like I've seen people I watch all these like smart I I'm so like nerdy when it comes to anything like dude automation is cool and electric too. cars, but they like get deep. They're like only use battery storage from solar when I'm washing clothes or when I'm using the air conditioner. But like for the TV or whatever, go ahead and use the grid and like shit like that. Like they'll mm. literally oh wait like, you watch YouTube channels down. about this stuff. Oh yeah, oh, I need to. I, I, I need to get subscribed to tons and tons. Like I'm such a nerd well, when it comes to any of that stuff. Yeah, our battery's not coming in for a long time because we got the Tesla. They're trying to like sell us the other shit. Every, everything's back ordered like crazy. Well, I mean, they have they had other ones available and they had like good ratings and all this. And this is one of the things where like I like you, but also my wife. She was like, I kind of trust Tesla. I was like, all right, sweet. Of course, it it's, was like a premium. Okay, so. <laughs> 
Yeah, but it's it's okay. I'll send you a video. The last one that I just watched, someone just got Tesla sol- Tesla Tesla Solar, and it was like their breakdown of it, right? Oh, they got the solar and panels was, or Tesla too? Because they got yeah, they got they got solar panels as well. But the issue that they had was the battery pack and the inverter. It wasn't like that. Not like that. Like the things are great. They work perfectly. Uh-huh. The installer messed up, right, uh-huh. and did something wrong, and so it ended up being this whole issue. But this is where Tesla fucking sucks, and I wish they would do something about it. Uh-huh. Their customer service communications, like just channels, mm-hmm. are fucking garbage. Great with like so. So this guy talks about it, and it, like I felt, I felt like because I went through this with the car. Uh-huh. Like he was basically like, yeah, the installer came. He was a Tesla certified person. Something happened, turned it on, and like all the antifreeze type stuff, the coolant all leaked all over the batteries. And like, that's obviously not supposed to happen, but this thing happened, it shorted this thing. And so we get on the phone, he's like, yeah, you're gonna have to call it in and tell them this. I'm like, okay, that's weird, because you're their installer, you should be doing this. So he had to call, and then literally this is where Tesla breaks down. They are the fucking best at making a product. Like they they make awesome shit, Mm -hmm. right? But once it's like you have an issue with it, it's like, oh, well, you should talk to this person. When that person's like, no, go talk to this person. Right. And it's not even like another person in the org. It's another division. <laughs> right? Like, so with the car, it would be like, oh, when you set up an appointment because something's wrong, they automatically do a mobile one. Even though when I signed up, I'm like, there's no way you could do this mobile. I need you. Like, it's a suspension problem. They're not going to fix it in my driveway. And they're like, well, we still have to sign you up for mobile. And then mobile has to call you and tell you, hey, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that in your driveway. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And then wow. they're like, so you're going to have to do it again. And then it'll set something up for the service center. And you're like, okay, cool. Well, then the service center now calls back and is like, oh, I know we you picked the date that we said was available on the 7th. Well, now we're not available till the 13th. And, and it's because now it's a whole different division. And then then you get there and the car is there and then you don't know what's happening. Like there's like, then, then now it's like, okay, is the app going to tell something? Is someone going to call me? Dude. Cause there's no, like, let me just call the service center and like figure out what's going on. It's like, now you have to do everything through the app, but the app literally directs to like different places. And so this guy was basically def- like describing the exact same thing, but dealing with solar. And so it was like he had to deal with like, oh, well, there's a panels division, then there's the battery division, oh, and no. then there's this division. <clears throat> I can assure you, and so, this company that's installing it, I mean, I'm saying this, and we'll see, but like, if any shit goes wrong, like, I am fucking up their asses. They're, they're going to fucking figure no, it out. No, well, maybe that's, maybe that's the trick, right, is you think it's smart to just go direct, uh-huh. right, to just be like, let me just call Tesla, because I got everything Tesla. Right. But maybe having this third party. <laughs> right. Is the trick just like the they deal? The they band. deal with the bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Like for for real. <laughs> like they deal with all the garbage, so you don't have. It's like the idea of like a, uh, what's it called when you like somebody Mediator? books your vacation oh. for you? Uh, oh, uh, a travel agent. Yeah, right. Oh, it's like yeah. yeah. I know I could go get the airline tickets and I could go book mm-hmm. the hotels and I could find this, but why don't you go do all that work for me? Yeah, and I'll just give you a little bit of money, and they're like, cool, like. Like there's something about that middleman. Dude, you're right. We're legit making the like strong case for the obvious. It's like so obvious, except which is. (laughs) Go ahead. No, I mean, except it's funny because that's typically I feel like these days it's like cut out the middleman. No, but there's tons of these services that like I will pay for in a heartbeat. I am not the negotiator of this family. You know, you've met my wife. Mm -hmm. Like she's Chinese. She wants to negotiate for fun. I'm like, just tell me the price so I can pay it and leave. Right. But like, I know how like buying a new car works. There's markup and there's room for them to negotiate down and they will do it. Yeah. I just don't want to do it. Oh, dude. So I would totally pay somebody to just go negotiate it for me. Send me the paperwork. I'll docu-sign it and then I'll just bring me the car. That is a, uh, they've talked about something similar on the, the, my first million podcast, but, um, that would be a great service right there. Like, so I don't know if I told you whenever I was getting my forerunner, I mean, I don't like doing that negotiating either because I don't know enough. Like it's either I'm haggling too hard and I'm really like putting them in a bad spot or I'm not haggling hard enough and I never know where the line is. 
Um, so like, you know, I mean, I, I want it to just be a fair deal, but the way that the current car industry works, like I would love it. And that's what I think Tesla does, right? It's just like, this is the price. You just buy it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. There, there's no, there's no negotiating. Yeah. If you buy direct from, from Dude, Tesla, you go into a normal car, a car dealership and it's like, I, you know, I hate to, sh you know, shit on car salesmen. It's like they're incentivized like so extremely to get you to, or I mean to get the most out of you for the least, you know, give you the least and get the most. Like it's like, it seems like that's the way it's in, they're incentivized and it's like they're trying to make money and feed their family and shit. I get it. Um, so anyway, my, you know, my best buddy, Chris from high school, he's been like a car salesman since basically we were in high school. And so what I end up doing is I'm like, Oh, I need to talk. I need to call my wife real quick. And I call Chris up and I usually don't give him a heads up. It's like, I just ended up in the, you know, that's usually how it happens. Like you go to a dealership and then before you know it, you're like buying a car or some shit. Um, at least that's what happens with me or you're trading one in or whatever. And, uh, Anyway, I just use him and I'm like, this is my wife. Last time I was there, the guy was like, man, your wife knows how to drive a hard bargain. I was like, yep. <laughs> He's like, yeah, this is about and as she good has as a deep voice. Get. Yeah. Yeah. I can hear her. Um, no, I, I had a buddy, Mike, that I worked with at, at the credit score company. He passed away, but he was totally my, he was my, my finance dude. Yeah. But, but that's okay. So here's my, here's my, my rant of that. Right. Uh huh. Like I was talking about, like I do research on any of these things. If I'm going to go buy a car, if I'm going to do whatever. Right. And like, so by the time I'm walking through the door, I'm, I'm there to buy a car. Like I I've already done the research. I know what the prices are. I know what it could go for. I know what's going on in the industry and how you're going to have some markup. And so, and I've tried this too. And they still, this is, it bugs me. I've been like, okay, Hey, I know what the price for this is. It should be somewhere around here. I want to pay this much a month. Here you go. Can you do that? And instead of saying yes, no, it's, ah, I don't know. Now we have to play this fucking game well, and let me write some numbers manager. on a piece of paper. And then I got to go take it to the oh, manager dude. and they're going to scratch something out. And then they're going to bring another number back. Let me tell like, you something. That fucking process that I get is psychological drives me fucking insane. And I just want to leave every fucking time. Like I fucking hate it. Uh, same. And here's what else I hate about that. It didn't used to happen early on. Uh, but now they like write a number and they're like, can I get your signature right there? I'm like, no, like um, this isn't like, this isn't a deal. Like you're going to go take this piece of paper to your manager and you're going to come back and say, what about this? Like, like, I, I, you know, basically what they're trying to do is to get you like the, you've set a number that is like within their range and it's probably like a better or, or what they're going to do is basically hold you to that number and then say, great, this is an 84 month contract, but you said, you know, we met your number that you could pay monthly or whatever. Right. And you signed it, you know, it's just a stupid thing to like, make you feel like you're like locked into something and it's not a good experience, but anyway, it's a horrible experience, which I get like why Carvana and like all yeah. these other ones that are coming out where you just buy it directly. Right. Like, I, I, I get it. I don't, that seems way fucking easier. They just drop the car off and you just filled out some paperwork online and done. Yeah. Like that's the experience I want, but I also don't want to wait for it to get delivered. I'd love that experience. And I just want to yeah. drive up there yeah. and go, that's the one. Give me that one. And thank you. See you later. Yeah. You know, well, like, I it got, should be um, that simple. One of my cars that I got, I got two, uh, basically dealerships competing against each other. And what I first did was I, I went to true car and I did that thing. Um, I think that's what I went to and basically like saw all the offers come in. And then I just started like going down the ones that I had zero interest in, like that dealership. It was like too far away or something. And then I just started making the calls like, and making my throwaway deals to where I got to a number where I was like, we're real close. Like then the way I was like, let's see if I can get it lower is I basically went quite a bit lower. I, let's say like, the, you know, monthly payment for like a, you know, I'm just making this up, but for like a three year, or, you know, th I was doing a lease at the time. So like a three year lease was going to be say $500 is like kind of what I had worked out was like, okay, close, but let's see how far I can get it. So there's two dealerships that were like pretty close to me. So I wrote up the deal and I sent it to one or, uh, I, I called one and I talked to him about the deal. And, uh, I went 40 under, 
um, or something like that. I went pretty far under and they were like, uh, yeah, um, cool. Like come in and let's make the deal. And I said, all right, send me an email with all those details just to make sure we're on the same page. And they did. And they did leave off one thing in the beginning, uh, which was like, um, some of the, the, you know, the warranty stuff or whatever that you can either, they can either bundle in or you can have to pay for or whatever. And I was like, Nope, we talked about that being bundled in. So he fixed it. And so then, uh, I copied that and I sent it to the other dealership, except I put like another, like 30 under. And I was like, Hey guys, like you're a lot closer to me. I'd rather do this deal with you. I said, but here's the deal I'm getting from X. I didn't tell them who it was. Cause I know they all probably all know each other and be like, Hey, what the fuck are you giving this guy this sweet ass deal? which wasn't true. But anyway, I was like, Hey, if you want to do this deal, I'm down to go with you. If you know, if not, I'm going to the other place. And they're like, all right, cool. Come in and let's do the deal. And I said, great. Send me an email from you with these de with these details and I'll come in. And they did. And it was like the smoothest, but it still like took me like, I don't know. I think I was still in there for like fucking two or three hours for some reason. This is the whole like <laughs> dynamic pricing and like, random markups and all this kind of shit for the same item. Right. right. That like kind of drives me insane. Like we're, we're going through this right now, uh, back to the travel thing. So we booked our, our, uh, our summer vacation. Cause I'm on vacation in a few years with the pandemic and everything. Uh -huh. Right. And so we, I used to work in hospitality and like deal with it. And it's like, you learn, like if you go straight to the hotel, you get the best deal. Mm -hmm. Cause if you go to like Travelocity and all those other yeah, things, yeah. That now the hotel is having to pay extra right. on all those, right? And so we go straight to the hotel, find the one we want, book it for the nights. And then we start looking around and we're like, wait, this is the same hotel and this is fucking cheaper than what the hotel just charged us. Hmm. And we ended up fucking going to like, you know, the Costco travel thing. Uh huh. And like we're going through it and we're like, oh, fuck, the hotel's in here. So we call them. Dude, it's not even half. It's less than half of what the fucking hotel charged us. Wow. For the exact same room, the exact same dates, the exact same everything. So you were able to cancel the yeah. other one and rebook? And so, yeah. So now it's like, now I have to play this fucking game where it's like, okay, well, we're going to cancel that one. And then we're going to get this one. When it's like, why can't I just get the fucking, just one, there's one price. It's one hotel. But it's like, why is it like. If you go, you and me and you went to the same place, the same room, same time. Uh huh. You got a totally different deal than I did. Like, yeah. I don't. I. It's like I get it. You're just trying to make way as much money as you can, and right. I, I. I'm all for that part of things because I want to make money. But from the consumer's perspective, you're just like, I feel fucking dirty, and I haven't even gone there yet. Right. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, they're I setting feel, the. I feel ripped off before I've even gone. Yeah. I mean, it's a part of that experience. Like. Yeah, you feel ripped off. You're like, you know, completely lost trust before you even engaged with, you know, any yeah, of the Yeah, it's services. like, so now what are you going to do with, like, fucking excursions and food? Like, now I'm just mm -hmm. like, I know I'm going to get fucked. Anytime, like, like time you now. go, that's what you should do. Like, go eat. Like, it's all-inclusive. Well, I guess if it's, if it's all-inclusive, it's already paid for. But anything, like, if there's any beer or whatever, and uh, they bring you a tab, say, I'll give you half. I'll pay you half this. How about that? Which which is a thing in Asia, like if you go to like the hotel, like and you come to pay the bill. Oh yeah. And like the bill's like three grand, and you're like, how about fifteen hundred? They'll be like, how about two? Interesting. And you're like, okay. You know what I mean? Like in certain places, like negotiation is just well, yeah, that's just part that of life. one's an interesting you know? one. I definitely am familiar with some hard negotiating in you know Africa and in the Middle East. Uh, it's like it's like fun for them. Like, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, and it's one of those things where it's just like, it's just ingrained, right. Which has to be like so helpful for business yeah. and just sales in general where it's just like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Not growing nice up kids. with that. Like, it's like, I wish I had, Oh, people are better. so uncomfortable. Americans yeah. specifically. No, it's in my wedding vows that she has to like go return things for me. <laughs> she has to like do all the negotiation stuff for it. Like, it's like, I don't want anything to do with it. Yeah. Like I, I hate it. It, it makes well, me like, feel uncomfortable. Um, yeah. We were, when we were in uh, Dubai, Mark was like showing me the, the ins and outs of negotiating. And it's like for him, I think he's really good at it. Um, but I think just generally, um, people from those regions that have grown up with it have these like 
ways of doing it. It's like poetry. It's like uh, for with Mark specifically, it's very much like an art form. And he was like telling me like, as he said everything, like what his like intent or what he hoped to get out of the other person with like every line and it like worked so well, like it was really good. And so, uh, you know, they walked off to do some other shit and I was like, all right, there's a thing I want to get. I'm gonna go see if I can do it. And, uh, I felt like I did okay. And Mark was like, how much did you pay for it? And I was like, I'm not telling you, dude, I don't want you to shit on me. Like I'm feeling good about it right now. I'm sure he could have got it for probably a fraction. So what's funny about him, he was telling me a story because his parents, you know, they, they live out here now Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, you know, it's like, obviously if he's that way, that means his parents are that way because that's how he got it from. It's just like a cultural thing. Right. And, uh, he was telling me like, you know, it's like his dad goes to target and like, like the, the price just shows up and he's like, it's like 50 bucks. He's like, I'll give you 25, you know, he's like. She's, you know, it's like he tells me that or something. (laughs) He's like the, the, the girl by the the counter is just like, like 25 card and then 25 in cash. Like what what, 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 what are we talking about? Can't even conceive of the idea that you're trying to negotiate. She's like, (laughs) yeah, like that just does not exist in this world. Okay. So 25, $2 bills or (laughs) (laughs) yeah. Yeah. So they're from Lebanon just for anybody that's listening. Yeah. But, um, well, cool, dude. Well, hey, uh, so big milestone for us this week. That I mean, I don't. I, I think you caught. I I totally missed. Like, I saw I it text coming you, up, like actually, at, late at night. You you sent me the text, and I was like, "Yes, I saw it headed there." Yeah, I, I was a like thousand. getting ready for bed. Yeah, and we broke a thousand subscribers. It was like a like a thousand seven or something that night. It was like you know midnight or something. I was like, "Oh shit." Where'd that come from? Crush seven. Yeah. When I, um, so I was telling you earlier when I, like you were oddly, cause you were keeping track for so long of like kind of the stats and progress and all that. But anytime I, you know, load the episodes, I, I kind of see where we're at. And I think you and I kind of had this, like initially like this, like adrenaline high or whatever, every time we'd see more followers. And then you were like, all right, a thousands are, are, you know, our, our milestone. And I think the really the last time you and I were both like, we're checking it regularly. It was around the 600s. I mean, we would look yeah. and see like, oh, we're making progress. But which, up until like the which, 600s, I was like following kind of religiously. I was like, okay. Well, but that was just a few days ago, and now we're 1,059. Well, I mean, we were – no, we were – a few days ago, we were not. We were in the 900s. We were in like not 600s. No, no, no. I'm saying since I sent you that text oh, after we wait, broke 1,000, it was 1,007 when I text you. It's 1,059 Dude, right, that, I'm looking um, right now. Our 45 minute episode really paid off. Yeah, we're doing like four hour episodes now from yeah. now on. Well, that's uh, cool. So, yeah. you have any other, uh, you know, probably catching a little off guard. You know, when, when we first started this, we were talking about stats a little bit. And, you know, some people are kind of into that. But for us, yeah, I don't know. It uh, kind of got to where it was like, all right, let's not focus on the stats quite so much. It It's, well, also, the big thing is that uh, Google. And YouTube just changed like their algorithm just pretty recently. And so we definitely saw like a drop in views where it would, you know, normally average like over a thousand and it would just be like, oh, well, here's 20, you know, or something like that. Like, so it was definitely, I kept trying to like look and see like, did we lose like, you know, like the suggested videos or the browse features or stuff like that? And we haven't, that's, which is a good thing like 42% of our traffic still comes from suggested videos, 28 from browse. And then another 25 is direct, like of just actual subscribers. And then like a bunch of other, you know, uh-huh. like searches and random stuff that's hmm. like out there. But like, so I, I'm, I'm really wondering, cause I told you I've been watching a lot of videos and stuff on just like how to game the system a little bit, you know, and mm-hmm. like what, what's working, what's not. And we've been playing with it a little bit where it's like, the number one thing they're always talking about is current events. Right. So it's like, whatever's popular, is that what you're talking about? Um, so there's definitely some stuff like that. that I, I mean, we've been trying, but I feel like I've, I, I mean, I know you do the editing and I should do more on like the writing stuff, Whatever, and, man. Whatever. but we, Wrong we don't good. do a good job of, uh, our, our, uh, that's right. I'm, I'm the head of this our venture. SEO. Got shit. Other things going on that we don't talk about as much. It's fine. 
No, but it's just like it's but I still do all the research and like trying to figure all the things out. So it's like if I don't put it into play, then it's not really helping us me even doing the research to figure oh, yeah. out what you the know, fuck how you to make it better. Right? Yeah. So but no, I mean things are still going really good. Like uh I I don't know, we're actually also our videos are actually showing up in Google searches now, which Ooh. they weren't before. Uh you know where we're not still like, showing up is if you search UX design. Dude, I scrolled really? like in, infinitely. I scrolled in YouTube, searched UX design. Yeah. They must be reading the actual content or listening to the actual content. And they're like, I don't think this is about UX design. <laughs> um, or we're just not hitting those like those fucking. I feel like everything in UX design is the same title over and over again. All right. So we're like going to give- become a UX designer without any experience. What UX designers do on the daily. Well, you, you know, know, like how much does a UX designer make? That's what we need to do. No, I mean, but I feel shorts. like there's a million of those with the exact same titles. Like when you do a search for UX design, like yeah. that's what it all is. But anyway, but yeah, no, I mean, uh, I also random stat is 11% in the last month has come from people linking from Facebook. Very interesting. Yeah. Which I haven't posted anything. I don't think really huh. you have either. We haven't, that's the other part of, you know, we don't <laughs> promote ourselves. That's fine. That's Peace. Fine. But uh, yeah, like we got Google searches, we got some duck, duck, go searches and we got some Facebook references. Fuck so it's yeah. like up in that duck, duck, so, go. Yeah. Well, got them privacy. Dope, peeps. Man. Well, cool. Well, thanks, everybody, yeah, helping us get to 1,000 subs. That's pretty dope. No. Oh, and actually, we're going to do a mid-podcast request and just, like, you know, get you to uh, press that subscribe button if you haven't already. You know? That's please. all I'm going to ask you to do right now. Pretty please. Yeah. Um, dude, I had this interesting... So, last week, I think it was, or within the past couple of weeks, we were talking about your Instagram account. And you kind of mentioned like, um, you know, we just kind of brainstormed a little bit about you starting a meme account. Uh, I was kind of hoping like I was going to get with you and thinking like maybe we'd be these quick, you know, hustling fools that actually got it up, you know, in one week. Uh, I don't think that's happened, but I did start to kind of dig in and I, I was, I don't know. I was just like looking at Instagram and influencers and went down the rabbit hole and there's this like profile, like when you go into, like if you hit search, it'll just like recommend stuff. Anyway, there's this picture of this chick and I clicked on it and she had 3 million, 3.3 million followers. Her name was Coconut Kitty and you know, a babe and all that, whatever. Um, you know, I guess, I don't know if you can get canceled for saying that these days, but whatever. She, you know, her, she's she was an attractive female. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. She, her. Um, yeah. So anyway, I was pretty impressed by the 3.3 million uh, uh, followers. And so I was like, well, let me see if I can try to figure out how much this chick makes. And so I started just searching her name on Google or the, you know, her little moniker, coconut kitty. Then it took me down this very interesting rabbit hole. And one of the first things I saw was, um, the, uh, Oh, blanket on word. Basically the, um, the issue. It's not an issue though. It's, uh, oh, the controversy, the controversy, oh, Jesus. Okay. I need to take some brain pills or something. Yeah. So it said the coconut kitty controversy. Um, and I was like, Oh, well, okay. Um, that's interesting. I wonder what she did. Right. And, um, so I click on it and then it talks about like photo man- manipulation. And there was this other video on TikTok from some other young lady. It was talking about how much of an issue she, she had with coconut kitty, um, making herself look so young that she looked like a teenager And the whole idea was that she was, um, targeting pedophiles. And I was like, wow, okay, this is interesting. And, um, so I went to her profile and I looked back and I was like, I mean, I mean, I guess the whole account like is just that, but I'm like, why does she know? Like, what did she look like? So I keep, I'm like, I'm just curious now. Like if this isn't what she looks like, what does she look like? And basically I read further and it was like, yeah, if you go, if you scroll back to the very beginning, like you can see how she looks different, how she's changed. 
And basically it had like a quote from her. I guess she was like popular or not. I've never heard of the person until I saw her photo and looked her up. And I just thought it this seemed kind of like a generic Instagram, you know, babe account or whatever, coconut kitty. And, uh, but she had been like interviewed with like Rolling Stone or something about this whole controversy. And basically she was like, you know, I'm a, you know, my primary thing that I was doing to make money was art and painting and all this. And she was like, but then I got, you know, I had like, you know, 500,000 followers from posting these like, you know, sexy photos or whatever. It seems like pretty easy to do on Instagram these days. If you're, you know, a chick and you show stuff off, you get a lot of followers. Um, and then she was like, then I started getting, I wasn't like that popular, but I started getting popular enough that I got recognized a few times and I felt super uncomfortable about it. And, uh, she said, so I started just digitally man manipulating it. And she was like, basically she left all of her original photos cause she's not trying to hide the fact that the, the person you're looking at, you know, isn't her. She's like, yeah, I'm an, I'm an artist. And now the way that I'm expressing myself is through, you know, partly like a form of like digital art. And I was like, I just thought to myself that it was really fascinating. And then it referenced another, uh, um, like, uh, model Instagram model that was totally CGI. Now, of course you go and look at it and it looks like it looks really good, but it still sort of looks CGI. Um, and I, had, and I didn't go like down the rabbit hole looking for CGI models, but this one looked pretty good. And it's the one that they referenced. But anyway, I thought that I'm was just, pretty I'm, fascinating. I'm reading. I'm just like reading like while you're talking. Mm -hmm. Um, so apparently before Instagram, she was like, she did like online cam video. She was like, like a content cam girl before okay. that. And then it says she got burnout doing that. And then she started posting on Instagram, got a bunch of followers. And then uh, she said, it says that traffic and stuff started taking a dip. And it's almost, you know, basically almost defining, like, it's almost like she figured out her, her, like, uh, the personas of her mm -hmm. buyer. Uh -huh. Right. And then transferred that to also to like only fans and everything so that she could turn that into money. So it's almost like the new version of cams, but with like trying to make herself like, like you said, like almost like not look like herself. Yeah. So, I don't know. This is interesting, well, man. Dude, like, what's also awesome for her. I mean, Hey, get it how you can, as long as you're not like hurting people, like, um, you know, I don't no, know. People have I have no it. issue. Oh, I have no issue with any of that stuff. It's, it's just weird to, I mean, and also it's like, well, here's here, crazy. she's being accused of pandering to pedophiles. Uh, I thought that, that was kind of stupid she's, too. You know what I mean? Like if that was really the case and like, you're like, yep, we figured out our demographic guys. This is who we're going after. Let's do all the search terms and everything for that. <laughs> yeah. You know, like that's fucked up. Right. If it's just like, well, also if that was the case, then like the police, that you know should like utilize her talents <laughs> oh totally right like, what all right that here's what we're gonna do <laughs> to catch a predator river you ever watch that uh my mom I've, used to like I know make about me watch those when i, mean, I was like I, I, in like middle school and high school and stuff i've heard about it a lot i'm not sure if i've actually seen one or if i've just seen like ep excerpts where the guys like they'll show up on the beach and right. like oh no i'm just this here what, enjoying the beach no this is what's fucked up okay so it's like i've told you like i was like a man child growing up <laughs> And it's yeah. like, I think my mom had like this fear that like, I was going to be dating this girl who's like the same age as me, but like, I'm going to be looked at like oh, I'm some fucking that's old man yeah. dating some like 13 year old. Cause it's like, I already have facial hair and like, I'm just fucking six foot two and 200 pounds already. Uh -huh. And like, I was going to look like some pedophile. So she would like, we'd watch the show and she's like, this is what you have to look out for. She's like, I know you're not doing anything wrong, and she's the same age as you, but people are going to think something different. You know, I'm just like, I'm 13 years old. I can't help Your mom is literally like, big. you need to date older women. <laughs> Pretty, I mean, that's. I, I guess I didn't catch that. That was what she was trying to tell me. She's like, just just, just go early with the MILFs, like right now. Just, just, just go right now. But, yeah, I don't know. This, this is crazy. But what this, I don't know, the, what you made well, me think of with right this Right before is, you get into that, one okay, thing I thought ahead. was pretty interesting so this gal, it wasn't like she's, if you look at any of her art, it's not great. Um, it's like art you would see at like, um, like a really shitty dive bar. It's like the theme, like she's like a biker chick kind of, or something like she's, you know, 
she's got tattoos and all this and she's got like um you know her pictures are of like motorcyclists Holy and shit like that shit what like okay so i mean i just looked at like i didn't look at, i was reading that article about the controversy but seeing her real photo versus like what's out there it's like oh it's, it's like a, a com- 30 year difference well I, I wouldn't even really i didn't even think of the age i i couldn't i i mean she still looked young i thought but like definitely i don't know to me it just looked more of like a different person yes she looks older but i didn't see the one that people think was like you know catered towards pedophiles i didn't really think she looked like a teenager in that or anything oh my god that's not real is it that's the first the first image that popped up when i when i looked up her and it's like it's like a side by side showing what she really looks like and then like the manipulated version next to her Dude, and she's it looks just been like out in the sun too long it it looks like it's like it's like it could be like this person's grandmother yeah right i mean like, a hot not saying she's like for sure but oh no, i mean beautiful but i'm just saying like what she's altering it to look like well is like this not is one like, of these oh ones. i took away my wrinkles it's yeah. like I am a completely different person. Oh no, that's and what I'm I was trying to say. I wasn't clear. Yeah, okay. She's photoshopped no, I, it herself. It was more I needed a, I needed a visual cuz I didn't know what you were talking about. I yeah. thought you were saying like making it look like anime or some shit. Well, that's kind of like um if you okay, you just have to check out her um Instagram cuz like some of them do start to look it still looks real though. It still looks real. But she, she says somewhere in that article that she was like uh, characterizing herself after like anime figures. Uh, but to me, the whole thing, man, this picture you just sent, I mean, it's going to be in the, in this, in the video for this episode. (laughs) It's, uh, I didn't see anything quite like that. I didn't know that it was so, you know, drastic. I knew she looked totally different, but yeah, she's just been out in the sun baking, but dude, good job on the Photoshop skills lady. I mean, Photoshop, like badass. Like I, I want you to do my bio pictures. Dude, I'll crush it in some Photoshop. I'm okay. Anyway, well, anyway. what I was going to say um, is that good for her because her, um, yeah, obviously she's, you know, uh, is this considered like a sex worker? Like um, if you're showing, yeah, if you have like a yeah, OnlyFans page, I'm, right? That's like sex work, right? Or is like I, I, prostitution I, sex I work? I don't know. No, I think I don't know. I mean, it's not the act of sex. It's like you're selling. Right. It's like dominate and like, being a dominatrix and shit. That's like sex work. No, but even Anything that pertaining is pertaining like, to like yeah. sex. Yeah, but there's also like the physical nature of. I know, but I mean, I'm I just of, talking about like the term sex worker. Like you've heard that's that. That's what I'm right? saying. I, I don't think this is this is that. If it's digital content and it's like other things, I don't think you fall into the realm of sex worker. Huh. Now I'm real curious. I do know somebody who considers themselves a sex worker and she's like a dominatrix used to live here in Dallas. Now she lives in New York, probably a good move for her. Um, well anyway, so whatever the case is, she has, Oh gosh, I was looking at an 11. So she has a, a fans only and her follower count is, well, I couldn't I even find I like it. the the official account because there's like so many copycats. Oh really? Um. Okay, one point five million likes. That's not the same. I could have sworn somewhere I saw the um. How many people were actually following her account? Um, but it's a lot. I'm, you know, I'm kind of screwing it up because I was hoping to have some numbers. I did this. <clears throat> I came across this almost a week ago. Um, I did have some numbers, but she's raking in like hundreds of thousands of dollars a month um, from doing this. Um, so hey, I'm, I get mean, some Photoshop. Uh, yeah, and um, it's like a show your booty. That's definitely an option. Uh, I'll get our. I'll get right on that. <laughs> <laughs> Like we'll we'll promote my new Instagram account on next week. Boom! I'm super into that. Wait, Instagram or fans only? Wait, where are oh, we going with this? Only fans, both. I don't know. Whatever you want. Oh, yeah. Whatever it's people will pay fans. for, yeah. I'll do it. Okay. Well, I'm cool. cool with it. So oh. totally random, just to end. end oh that yeah, you were going to take this in another direction. No, outside of that, I I already forgot about that. But so like, if you go to Instagram.com/slash/coconutkitty, 
Uh huh. Uh, it's not that person. It's a totally random person that just has photos of her and her cats, and she does some <laughs> like acro acrobatic uh, uh, exer like what is it called like aerobics and stuff, uh-huh. and it's just like her living her life. Like you gotta imagine like. <laughs> Like, These millions of people following? think, yeah, think like that's her official account or something, you know, and send her messages and stuff. Like it's got a, sh- that this lady's probably like, I got to change my account. Yeah. Hers is coconut kitty one, four, three. And what's interesting is you can see other people that you follow, um, who follow this person. And, uh, on mine, it's, I follow some of these influencers like Rob Wolf. He's like, he wrote like, um, uh, he's like a nutritionist guy. He's written all these books. He's pretty, he's a super smart dude. Uh, anyway, he's following her. Yeah. Hmm. Following the talent. All right. Um, well, you were going to take this into like the, um, Oh, it just, it just made me, yeah. It just made me think of, um, I forget the name. Let me look it up. Um, which is when you first, when I read this, I, I thought that's what, um, you were talking about it. No, this coconut kitty was like a real person. Yeah. Uh, what's the I've name been hearing of it? a bunch of weird metaverse stuff lately. Well, like, but it's not metaverse, even metaverse. This is like crime. this is like pre metaverse. No, this is like uh, actual just influencers, right? And there's like um, these ones now that are like virtual, like they're just digital. Oh, like right. They're not a real person. Like, but they have millions of followers, and like they'll post like on social, and it's That's like crazy. this. This CGI influencer, right? Um, Is there an individual person behind each one of those? So I don't know. Um, But like, I mean, legit, look here, I'll send you some. So like, what is this? Lil McQuayla is this one. She's got 3 million. I can't spell that. She's got deals with with Samsung. Oh, is she kind of Asian with freckles? Yeah. And it's this is the one. So the article that I was reading about. Coconut Kitty referenced this person too, this yeah, fake. But like, how crazy person. is it? It's like it. I mean, it's not a robot. It's literally CGI, but yeah. it's like they just create all these scenarios and like put them in certain places, make them wear different clothes. Like it's like 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 they're a real person or yeah. like, hey, I'm at the park with my boyfriend. You know, like types of things where it's like, yeah, they have like, her like have, hanging out with other real friends and shit. It's pretty interesting. I did look at this one. She's 19 year old robot living in LA is like like her bio. She's, Um, she's a pretty figment of our imagination. Yeah. So there's a movie. Have you seen, um, the one with Ryan Reynolds? Uh, it's like one of his newer movies. I hate this. We keep referencing shit. Uh, don't know the name. Well, normally Um, I know Ryan Reynolds one. Yeah. Yeah. It's a movie where he's he's like a, a character in a video game. It's called Free Guy. Have you not seen oh. this? Yeah, I just I just recently saw that. Yes. Anyway. Oh. Sorry. Like you were like confused. I, I you was. And movies I, being confused. That's weird. I know. So basically, that's I, what happens with him. He's like this digital. It's just a, you know, whatever. I, I don't want to spoiler the movie because it's brand new. Well, no, that's actually like a year year old. I don't know. Well, I just saw I it too. That that's me on different because that's like almost like you're you're in a well, digital space and then you are awakened by no. But this chick like falls in love with space. this like other. She thinks it's like another gamer on the other side of some computer somewhere, but it's just him. I'm with you. So I guess but, the which I guess I guess I can like, see that. I can see that about these real life people. people. Yeah, imagine real life somebody, people are interacting with digital. Yeah. Influencers so imagine and somebody like that, that okay. doesn't actually know that this McQuayla is a fully digital CGI person and they're just like super in love with her. Like some little 13 year old is like, Oh, that's my dream girl. You know what I mean? Or not even that. I mean, imagine if like, if she is automated, like imagine DMS, like, like if you write her, does that, is there some automatic thing that automatically writes something nice back? Like, is she like the perfect girlfriend oh. type person? <laughs> <laughs> right. That just, just sends you back nice messages and be yeah. like, Oh my God, I just looked at your photos. You guys are so cute. Like blah, blah, blah. Like message me anytime. And it's just like totally automated since this is a totally made up thing. It or to your question, is it, is it run by a real person or a team of people? And this is just right. the face. I don't know. I'm, I'm really um, curious. That is interesting. Well, uh, Yeah. 
I just lost my train so of thought. So she's the number oh, one. Yeah, three million apparently. followers. That is really impressive. And she's got a deal with, I think you said like Adidas or something like that. No, I mean, just one of the last posts is with Samsung. I mean, that's crazy. Samsung. Yeah, she's on Team Samsung. But she's done things with Calvin Klein. She's been in the Times Magazine for most influential people. Like, what? And, yeah. That's what I'm saying. And she Dude. released a single. She released a single on Spotify. All right. Well, I'm not going to listen to it right now, but I'm going to check it out. It better be good. It's called Money and Sleeping In. I mean, I'm kind of interested. Yeah, I like both of those things. Well, dude, um, interesting shit. It's crazy. Well, it's crazy. You know, to uh, uh, sort of balance out our last uh, hour and 45 minute episode, this is going to be more like a 45 minute episode. So I got to bounce. All right. Yeah. I'll miss, anyway. I'll miss you. Yeah, we didn't even talk about your sweet ass background. Oh, my background failure. I know. You uh, turned it around. Yeah. You're like, dude, hang on. I'm going to do this. And then as soon as we turn on, you're like, God damn it. This didn't work out. No, I, thought. no, I literally, it, I thought it was going to, I was like, give me 10 minutes. I got to do this thing. It had to take me 30 and I still hate everything about it. And I'm going <laughs> to rip it all apart and do something else now. So yeah, I was just tired of everyone looking at like my dirty ass game room that I keep saying I'm going to clean up and then don't. Well, normally it's like pretty under control. The last video we did, you immediately, once it <laughs> came out, I so guess you. So here's the thing. No, here's the it. thing. So it's like when, when we're on this screen right here uh-huh. and I'm on my monitor, my, like, I, oh, it yeah, looks it's fine. Oh, yeah, it's You just see a little square. And then, like, I'll, like, my kids will be watching it on TV or, like, I'll, like one of my designers will be watching it. And she'll send me a screenshot of her watching it on TV. And you can, like, it's so <laughs> bright. You can see, like, everything in my game room. And I'm like, yeah. oh, my God. It just looks like I'm the biggest fucking slob like, on the planet. <laughs> So oh my god, just, I'm a fucking hoarder. Yeah, it's, it sucks. It's just this is the room that as we clean the house, everything is brought in here and just left until we like sell it yeah. or like throw it away or donate it. And so it's just like this is the dumping ground room. But anyway, the dump. This well, is the dump. I record in the dump. Hell yeah. All right, bro. Well, have a good rest of the day. <laughs>